Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. This gorgeous sunset, beautiful far off misty mountains, a little bit of foreground tree, these giant limbs, all this stuff. It's just like we could literally walk out into the scene. You're obviously excited about painting this painting. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on. We're gonna do it just like this. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. All right, so today we have uh, dark sienna, sap green, thalo green, uh, Thalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, cad yellow, and bright red, okay? Now, I decided we're going to make some crazy sort of scene like we always do, and you guys have already seen it, the guys on YouTube, so I'm literally about to make it up. Anybody watching now on Facebook is kind of getting a sneak peek at what the tutorial for Wednesday is going to be like, so let's go into our yellow right here. And why not kind of just decide, right? Just drop it in. I like just making these big, long strokes, and then you can kind of blend out whatever you don't need. A little bit of the bright red. Come in like that. Just right on. Don't need to wash the brush or anything. All right, if we want a little bit of dark red in our reflection down around the bottom, whether that be snow or water or whatever it is, then we need to add a little bit down there. And the more paint that we add, the darker the color is going to be. You can tell we started with Bob Ross Liquid White right there on the edge of the, covering the entire canvas, and that way it allows all these thick kind of oil paints to blend together, right? So let's go into our crimson now, without washing the brush again, because I'm a lazy painter and I don't like to wash the brush too much. So let's come in here with the crimson. You can tell the difference immediately between the red and the crimson. You can see the difference in color there. And that's what we're all about at Paint With Josh, differences in color, right? That is what we are about. Why is my easel so shaky tonight? All right. A little bit of that, a little bit of there, a little bit of here, a little bit of there. A little bit of crimson into whatever this is going to end up being at the bottom, right? We don't know what it is yet. It could be water. It could be snow. It could be, it could be anything. It could be whatever we want it to be. All right, let's get, finish our edges off with this nice pretty color. Just all mixed up on the brush. Takes like two seconds to finish your edges, wherever that color is. And then up here where we change the color, we'll go back and add it, right? We haven't blended anything out. So don't worry about what it looks like now. We're gonna take all this and really only save about a small area of this yellow. Everything else is gonna turn this beautiful color of orange. So let's wash the brush off. Let's wash it off. Now we're gonna double check the camera here. What are we looking like on Facebook? Hey, Facebook guys, let me, uh, let me zoom, let me pull up a little bit. We'll go like that. And I'm gonna zoom you guys straight in on the canvas. We'll fill up the whole thing just with the canvas, just like that. Now I'm not gonna be able to really pay attention a lot to you guys because I am filming the tutorial. I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek, at least a few people that watch for an extended amount of time, you'll see what's going to come out next Wednesday on YouTube when we put it out. So, decided to give you a little, just a little taste, a little, a little sneaker for those that really care about what's coming out next Wednesday. Okay, let's get a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the crimson right here on the brush. Drop it in up here. That's not near enough crimson, right? I want it to be a little pur more purple than blue. So, you got to work that color in. There we go. And we don't have to cover everything, right? We want everything to kind of blend together. So we need to give it room to blend. Drop some of that darker crimson up in there. Maybe just the smallest little bit of our black, just to kind of change the color. Put our black and blue down here. Let it just mix in with whatever we've got going on down around the bottom, right? Back and forth, bingo, bango. We've got a cool little bit of whatever's happening down here. That's what we got. Cool little bit of something going on. All right, now we're gonna go back to that brush that we had that we washed off. Now it's not 100% dry, you can tell. It's still got a little bit of glare from the wetness that's in the brush. You don't need to get rid of all of that wetness, right? We wanna have some of that to help the paints kind of blend together. So, start in our lightest area, crisscross, just like this. All right, we're gonna come up into the color, bring some of it down, drag some of the yellow over, drag some of the red back and forth. And you can see how it'll start to mix together and make this beautiful color of orange that you couldn't even have mixed on your palette, right? If you tried a hundred times, couldn't have been that pretty. And that's what I love about this wet on wet style is that 
it allows us to do all sorts of things and change things and and have it kind of blend together very easily. It, it sort of does it for us, right? You just work at it, kind of blending things together, leaving some areas, blending a little bit more. Maybe we want more of that red to kind of disappear so it's not such a hard line. So let's blend it, let's push it away from itself, right? There we go, get this beautiful bit of color. And you can always go back and add clouds and do all sorts of stuff. I don't really want to go up and touch that dark area yet until I'm really satisfied with how we've blended all this stuff out. And again, you only really have to save the smallest little bit of that very bright, bright yellow and it'll turn into this fantastic painting. Look at that. Look at that over there. I'm gonna take a, a different brush so just so I don't have to wash it. And we're gonna pull this guy down and just stretch the paint and let it blend in with that other paint, right? Just kind of stretching it, letting it do its own thing. Letting it grow down from the corner up here, right? Straight across, down, 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 down. All these different angles give it that cool look. Very lightly, go back over the top, and now we have this perfectly blended sky where there's no real hard lines or anything that we have to worry about. Now over here, maybe we can get rid of this guy. Just blend them a little bit more and you get this cool soft little bit, but I love having the differences in color in there. I wonder even what a little bit of that darker colored purple might look like over here if we tried to sneak some of it in. Try to sneak some of that in over here. Not just, the, not a lot, just a little, a little hint, a little hint of some darker color up there. Finish off our edge, but I want to save a lot of that that area, kind of knock the, brush, no, knock the paint out of this brush here. I want to save a lot of this lighter color, so I'm just very lightly going to blend it. I don't want it to stretch and meet the other side. I just want to have some indications of maybe a little, little bit of lavenderish, bluish, purplish up there. Looks really cool. Always got to hit the sides a few times, and poof, we got a pretty awesome looking painting, guys. Come along the bottom in here, and just very lightly, back and forth. Yeah, got a whole thing. We can we could even do a seascape right here. We could do anything. That's the best part. Again, you can change your whole idea, change it from what you were gonna do to something completely different, just like that. And I love it. I love it. It's amazing. Now, why don't we do this real quickly while we've got it out, just because that spot in my easel is a pain in the butt to get to afterwards, and I don't have the right color on the brush. So let's do that. Nice and easy. I love this easel. I love it. There we go. Nice and tight. Now we're ready to work. Let's wash off these brushes. And it's a, for a reason. I don't want you guys to think like I'm doing something in the shadows and not telling you about it. And that's why my painting comes out like this. You know what I mean? I literally want you to feel like I'm sitting in your room or your kitchen or your studio or your living room or right on the couch next to you showing you how you can do, you know, kind of achieve the same thing. So, all right, I almost don't even want to touch the sky. It's so pretty. We could put like a giant bit of mountain back there. We could do all sorts of things. You could have this low hanging mountain. You could do a, a forest of trees. You do all sorts of stuff. And this doesn't have to be water. It can eventually be something else. Or you could do a seascape just based on how it looks right now. Or like just the tip tops of some trees. And there's a whole big sky country or so. Ooh, that's a good idea. Just do like, you know, maybe a little bit of far away forest and a couple taller trees that are sitting in the front. A nice, easy little tutorial, right? It wouldn't be too bad. What do you guys think? I'll give you, I'll give you some time to, uh, to talk it over amongst yourselves and leave a comment. What do you think about doing maybe like mostly sky, a little bit of far off like hills and then a couple little trees or something? And then we'll, you know, we'll figure it out as we go. But we got to have a base idea about what we're going to do. What if we did... Uh, I don't want to do too much. It already looks so pretty. Why, why do anything, really? All right, let's take a little bit of white. We'll do this far off. Because I love doing the chemtrails. You got to pick the right angle, though. Right? Less is more in this instance. Less is more. Right, we got such a beautiful sky. Why would we want to ruin it with a ton of clouds? That's my thought anyway. 
try to be as straight as we can be for our little bit of of uh, chemtrail. That's gonna be the only thing in the sky. That's kind of neat. But I like putting a little bit of humans out in nature. You know what I mean? You look up in the sky, no matter where you are, you look up, you're gonna see an airplane trail over the top of you. So why fight it, right? Why fight it? All right, let's make up, what colors are we gonna use for our mountains, guys? Or our trees or our shadows, you guys know. This sort of purpley color that Josh likes to use. It's black and blue and crimson. You can just mix it up, it turns real dark, real fast. But again, with the liquid white that we put on the canvas initially to start, this color is gonna lighten up as long as, uh, as well as every other color is going to lighten up, right? So you can tell the bright yellow here is not the same color that's right here. This is much more lighter version because it's been mixed with all that liquid white paint. And that's how we get all these colors to blend and do all that stuff, right? So, man, that's fantastic. We could do like a really wicked easy beach scene, guys. What do you guys think about that tree? About the trees, the tops of the trees, what do you think? All right, well, let's do a nice little easy tutorial since someone's sick in bed with the flu, right? Nice pretty little scene, some far off stuff, maybe a couple up close trees. I can see it, I can see it in my mind already. All right. <clears throat> Just because it's a little easier to work with on our 16 by 20 inch canvas, it's not so big, we don't want everything to grow so quickly, right? Let's decide, and we're gonna make this real far off little bit of hill back there. So I don't want it to be as dark as I can possibly make it. We almost need to make it as light as we can possibly make it. So let's grab a little bit of white, mix it in with just a touch of that original color, and we'll make this very light lavender color that's gonna really bounce off of the color that's back here. Okay, it doesn't have to be super dark, and the lighter it is, the more distant it's gonna make it. Right? And then we work towards each other, uh, towards ourselves, getting everything darker in shadow and brighter in, in color of highlight. So it's, it's, a, it's a conundrum. It's a conundrum. So we're going to take this light and we're going to try to put it back here and see if it's even dark enough. And then we can adjust and add a little bit more or do whatever and go on from there. So the one inch brush is a little bit easier to use than, you know, the two inch brush for some people. Shoot, I don't know, unless I've got uh, like a nice big, you know, 24 by 36, I don't even like using the two inch brush. Okay, let's decide, maybe I'm gonna wanna save some of that sunset -y color back there, cause all this could be clouds, it could be anything really. So let's come in and just start tapping in like this. Now on YouTube, just like you guys are looking at on Facebook, on YouTube, you'll see the full version and then every time I come up to touch the brush, the camera zooms into about where you guys are. It takes up the full screen some of the times really shows you how I do things and how we get them to make them look like that and do other stuff. So always check out the YouTube videos. They come out on Wednesday. Every Wednesday we get a brand new YouTube video, okay? Now let's take our other one inch brush that we have that doesn't have any paint on it yet. And we're just gonna soften this by kind of tapping up and dragging it down, just very lightly. We're not pulling it down with the brush. We're just kind of tapping it. Whatever color we pick up up here is getting deposited down here as it goes. Right, so we tap, 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 tap. And all of a sudden, look at all this mist start to form. Like, where is the bottom of this? We don't know. Don't know where the bottom of it is. The more and more we tap at it, the harder and harder it'll, it'll become to kind of decide what's the original color, what's part of this gray. And you just really keep going at it. You can even go from an angle like this and go down at it, kind of tap it down, bring it all down away from the top without pulling it, right? And that's how you get that very soft, very distant bit of trees or hill or mountaintop or whatever. And then you can come in with darker and darker and darker colors and work our way towards ourselves, right? Far off little bits. You can even take and just lift up on your brush just very slightly, right? You don't wanna make them grow too much, but now it looks like this far off bit of forest. Look at this, this light area in here. Almost looks like a cloud. We could literally bring another piece of of land or something into that. And that's very neat. There we go, I'm trying to bring it over, not all the way to the edge, but man, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool, guys. All right, so why don't we add just, we'll take like two little swipes of the paint. It's not a whole lot. We're gonna add it into here. So we just get a little bit darker, just a little bit. And then maybe we've got one that lives over off of this side. And if we can catch that bit of mist just right, Right? It'll make it look like there's something, there's distance in between there. All right, we're gonna come up here, almost have those areas touch. We don't want them to touch. We just almost wanna have them touch. 
Okay, just like that. You get that smoky bit. And we're using the actual lighter area of the canvas that we haven't even touched. It, we just painted it in there like that. We're using that as our mist or our separator. And it looks really cool. Looks like it's a little bit too high though. A lot of times it starts looking so neat that you want to add, you know, you want to have a lot of it showing and then it just doesn't make sense to my brain anyway. So let's do that. Maybe we come up here. Let me just do the whole thing across the side. Bam, 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 bam. You get these whole, all this little stuff. Little things going on, right? Take our top again. We can swipe it up. And then really just bash at this guy. Like, look at this. I'm just gonna bash down on him. And all we're doing is just pushing the color from the top down to the bottom, right? Trying to get it to blend in with this pink that's underneath. You can even sit here and do little circles, right? Once you've, once you've tapped it, you don't wanna do your circles too quickly Otherwise, you'll start to drag all that thick paint. You gotta make it nice and soft first. And now all of a sudden, we have these very far away little things in this beautiful, beautiful chemtrail up in the sky, if I do say so myself. Man, all this fogginess, all this mist, what's going on, what's happening back there, right? All these little things happening. And very easily, all we did was some tapping and some and some kind of, we gotta come up with a name for this. Some, it's not blending, right? Because blending is, is kind of this. So what is our little, our little tappy motion gonna be called? We gotta come up with a name and then we'll patent it, right? Cause all the other tutorials that wanna use it. Let's see, okay. Yeah, let's decide, what else can we do guys? We could do a bit of far off lake or a bit of forest down there. We could do all these trees to come down. We could keep adding all these rolling hills and just keep making them darker and darker. Let's do one, oh shoot, that was the brush that had all the light. The light color on it, Josh. That's all right, we knocked the, ma the majority of it off. Let's go back here. Get our darker color. That's why I have two brushes. It's just so I don't have to do so much uh, washing in between, right? Let's see, maybe we got this guy. And because it's so much darker, look at how much closer it's gonna make it look. And it just pushes all those other things back. And that's what's so fantastic. And I love coming up and above some areas, right? You don't need to see all of everything that happened back there. So we'll come down over here. This is almost like a little Smoky Mountains scene, sort of similar to the one that I did before. And we don't like that. We don't like to have similar paintings or do the same painting over and over and over and over again before I show you how to do it. I like being able to literally show you, you don't have to do anything special. I pulled this canvas out, I got the liquid white on it. And now I'm showing you exactly what I'm doing and we're getting this result. So if you wanna get this result, you do the exact same thing. And guess what? You're gonna end up with something pretty similar. Pretty similar. Let's bring it down, bring it down to Chinatown. Bring it down to Chinatown. Now the more you tap at it, the more it's going to mix with that liquid white that we had initially underneath all this color. And it's gonna become lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. So. Don't tap it too much, right? We wanna keep it darker. We wanna keep it dark, especially darker than the ones behind it to kind of push those off into the distance. And we can even see over here that we lost a little bit of that darkness because as we were going across, it became lighter on this side. So let's add in just a little bit of that dark, just so it's kind of matching the color that's on either side. And that way all those little bits get pushed back. Very simply done. All right, taking it over here, taking it over there, doing all sorts of stuff. Just literally trying to make it soft so we can put our next layer on. And that's all about, that's all painting is to me, it's just layers, right? Dark, light, dark, light, dark, down into light, and then something else darker. We're gonna come in. There we go. Now, I only like my, I'm, I'm a very low perspective painter, I guess, because I like doing my foreground in about the, the top four to five inch, uh, sorry, the bottom four to five inches of the canvas. So now that we're uh, down, you know, about six, five to six inches over there, I need to start thinking about where my water is gonna be, if it's gonna be water, or where my flat land is gonna be, or where the tip tops of my trees are. Where, where am I standing? Am I, am I floating in the tip tops of the trees? Am I standing down on the ground looking at the trees, you know, upwards? It's all about perspective, and I like this kind of low perspective. So if you paint with me, you're gonna have a pretty awesomely low perspective. Let's see. 
There's so many things we could do. So many things. All right, let's make a little bit of far off, like, oh, I don't know, something or other, some sort of detail, and then we'll, we'll go from there, right? That's how we do it. That's how we make stuff up around here. Okay, we're gonna mix up all this kind of color because we're done with that very light, far away sort of tone to our dark color. So we'll mix it all back in. Not, no reason to waste it. It'll all turn dark again when it goes back in here. Now I'm gonna get that off the knife. Grab our, our fan brush. I think this is a size eight. I can, yeah, size eight. And this is a master's touch size eight from uh, Hobby Lobby. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. We had Roberto's for dinner. And if you don't know what Roberto's is, it's like Pepe's Tacos or, or you know, it, name any authentic Mexican place, like fast food Mexican place, it's amazing. It's amazing. All right, we're gonna decide where we want our foreground trees because that'll let us know where we want our background trees. So, and if we're doing the tip tops of a forest, maybe we should have, maybe up here, up here guys, no? Down over here, right across all this pretty yellow, no? Where are we gonna, everyone's like, no, don't touch it there. Eventually we might have to put something over there. It really makes it stand out if you get that real bright background. So, heck guys, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Why don't we put one off here? leave this little guy. We'll start on the edge using just the corner of the brush as we push up and try to stay out of your way. See what I mean? All we're trying to do is make a messy shape. We're just trying to have these little bristles come out at different, different lengths, different angles, but we're trying to keep it all filled. We don't want to go like this, right? That's not what a tree looks like to me. When I look at a tree, it's nice and filled in and chunky. And you can't see past what's there, right? Which is very cool. We could throw land under here. Man, I don't know if we could do the tip tops of some trees, guys. This looks so neat. If we just did like a, a horizon off that way. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to paint what I, I just gotta paint what I see. I gotta paint what I feel. <clears throat> right back into that same color. You need a good fair amount of it on the brush. I mean, look, it's like a hatchet blade. It's all nasty or like an ax, right? All nastiness. So we put a bush in between there. And I told you we'd have to go over the top of that yellow. Put another little guy up here. Just again, touching with the very tip of the corner of the brush. And that way it's very small because the brush is turned sideways. I can't get that effect if I come in like this with the whole bit of the brush. You're going to get these very long bristles like down here, up here. And we're not trying to paint upside down trees. This isn't Stranger Things, okay? We're not in the upside down. Now look, just from bouncing it back and forth, right? Only allowing a little bit of the brush to touch at a time. We can shape it. And the more we go down, the bigger our bristles need to be. Right? They can come out a little bit further. And you just let your tree grow however it wants, right? And even right here, we don't have to fill that in. You don't have to, right? Unless you're like a super control freak like me and you just need it just a little bit darker like that, right? You don't have to fill it in. It doesn't all have to look the same. Okay, but we do need them to be just about the same uh, length down. Otherwise, one's gonna look further away. <clears throat> Let's grab that big old half round brush, or you could use your one inch brush or whatever you have. All right, we're gonna go into that dark color, kind of pulling down like this, and then we're gonna turn the brush over, right? And then push up like that. Look at those cool bits of like far away. Look at that, look at that, guys. Push up one, two times. Don't wanna do it too many times, right? Now we got this cool, freaky looking bush and some of the things aren't even connected, which I always thought was the coolest thing about like old school art where, you know, there's a there's a piece of a leaf of a tree, but it's not even touching the tree. But it's, you you know, you no one even it thinks twice about it because they know it's supposed to be there. And that's what's so cool. All these cool little things just from kind of tapping into it at a different angle than straight in or mushing down. Try different stuff. Maybe go off to the side. Kind of losing all of our paint but there we go cool little things different little things different little bushes all just making a mess right that's all we're doing that's all a bush is it's just a mess of dark paint just a splotch on there that's all you really got to worry about <clears throat> okay we're going to take that dark brush that we have still haven't washed a single brush well that's not true we did wash a couple look at that we're going to pull out the bottom 
but we can't let this, you know, this over here, it has to be higher than it is down here. So if we need to get a little bit of extra dark paint, now we have that line, that downward sloping line that makes sense. Okay, you can even put water in here still, you could do it, right? We don't wanna to cover too much. I don't wanna use, I don't wanna pull out too much because I'm gonna lose all this cool color that we laid down. We don't wanna do that, right? And pull out very lightly so it doesn't grow very far. And then all of a sudden we can start to piece together what our scene is gonna look like. And it looks mighty cool, let me tell you. Again, you don't wanna have your dark come up and be the same color as that dark or be too close in the color because it'll get lost and everything, you'll lose all that distance. But look at all that light we saved in between all those bushes. Just push all that stuff just so far back. How far is that behind there? My goodness, my goodness. All right, and again, I'm pulling very lightly because I don't want to lose that. And we can even pick it up over here. Like now this is the land. And that bit of red is just a, a bit of reflection off of the snow, if it was snow, right? You don't have to cover it all, is what I'm saying. Don't gotta cover it all. Now, let's do a further away bit of a tree. And why don't we do some different kinds, right? I like doing different kinds of trees. You can't just paint the same tree all the time. So black and crimson over here. Doesn't color, I mean, the, the color doesn't matter. Just as long as it's dark. Look, we'll put the blue in there too, so it's the same color. I don't want you to be like, oh, you changed the color all of a sudden. No, no, we didn't. All right, let's do maybe one over here. Just a little guy though. All right, the more we come down, the harder we have to push. So the trunk extends, right? And whatever happens down here, it doesn't matter, right? It can grow as far as it wants down there. As long as we're stopping, we picked a place where we want to stop. And now we can pull out. Look at all that other stuff just disappear, right? Or now it's a reflection of the water if you wanted it to be water under there. And you got this cool little stick kind of hanging off in the middle of nowhere. Now we get our super tiny micro liner brushes come out here, dip it into the paint. And this is the, the, the fun part, guys. When you have all this beautiful, bright color, it's nice and soft. There's nothing in the background to, to snag our brush or, or no thick paint back there. And you can make the coolest little things with the smallest little brushes and just a little bit of, of pressure. And you can make all these little branches come out. Look at that, just a small, oh, I'll try to stay out of your way. Just the smallest little things you ever done see with these cool little micro brushes, right? It's amazing. You can get these little micro brushes on amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. And that's my Amazon affiliate account. So I do make a little bit of money when you purchase these brushes or anything through that account. So go and purchase a yacht and then I might actually make more than like $3 a month from the Amazon store. There we go. I don't want to... You don't want to do too much, right? You start to try to do too much, try to make your branches look a certain way, and then it just ends up looking strange. So always remember if it's thicker out on the end, it's got to be thicker where it connects to the tree as well. And sometimes that means making our, our point of our tree a little bit taller, right? Who's going to know? Who's going to know that wasn't where it was to begin with? Right? Everywhere you get a little stick coming off, you throw a little something over there. Nice and simply done. That's what I like to show you. Very easy. Now, I did wash the brush off of that, so we can, we can count that as one brush washed. And all it was was just to get the dark paint off, which I'll probably end up just putting dark paint back on it later. But you can tell every area of the, of the tree branch is thinner than the trunk holding it up, which is good. And if it's thicker out here at the edge, it must be thick where it holds itself to the tree. Okay, that's like number one Josh rule. Can't have a big old thick branch out on the end because in my mind it would have cracked and broken off a long time ago. <clears throat> now, why don't we put a little bit of grass in here? We'll get our green, snag up a little bit of white. Come on, white. There we go. Just to brighten up the color of it. I don't need it to be the super darkest green, especially we're still a little bit further away from us. Let's take the green on the white over here. Just sort of tap it in very lightly very lightly coming down right meeting at that same spot though coming in coming over here one over there meeting up at that same area and that way our our land kind of turns and rotates you see that come over there and do whatever we want we can have a nice little rooftop pond to wherever we are or whatever we could have the grass come down like this now our hill's going up this way 
all sorts of stuff, right? We'll have this whole thing coming down. Get that dark color back on there so we get that initial shadow color. All right, maybe this guy comes down to wherever, maybe this is water, who knows? Who knows, it sure looks like something now. We'll take a little bit of that green, come in, need a little bit more of that green to show. There we go. Just dabbing it in, not leaving, you know, big holes in between so there's space. Very much just moving it with some taps. All right, oh, back in there. Save a little bit of that darker color and that light kind of haze, all sorts of stuff. Finish our sides over here. We can even make it nice and soft and foggy so we don't really know where it even ends. Nice little bit of a green hill coming down, right? And then we have all, we've almost created a, a pathway through the, through the tip top of the forest somewhere. I love how that, with that little bit of light color underneath right there, just helps push it back a little bit further. Just all on accident. You know what I mean? It's not a, it's not a planned thing. Our grass is gonna just grow all crazily like. Look at that. That's really neat. I like that one, guys. That is a nice little easy little thing. And we can bring it in and all again, all the, the darkness is is a little bit of undershadow to our grass, right? So come back in, grab up a little bit of white, a little bit of the green, just so it changes colors. And we'll come over here. Now that green's a little bit different colored than it was just above it. You see what I mean? Change, that little bit of change is what's gonna catch people's eye and it's what's gonna make your painting sell. It really is, a little bit of even white you can put back in there. As long as we can dab it out and kind of you know, adjust it, all those little things. Look at that, guys. Look at that, guys. All right, should we do another tree like that? That'd be cool. Little thingy, we could do lots of trees coming this way, right? Depending on what we do, if we leave our hill just like this, nice and bland with no details like we have over here, all this little grassy detail, this is nice and soft back here, right? So it could provide a cool bit of color to then add tree after tree after tree after tree and we won't have to worry about the, the detail in the grass because it'll all get lost behind that anyway. Or, you know, what do we do? What do we do? Let's put a path in there, yeah. Let's do that first. Okay, I had a question on, uh, on my, I think from Allison. Allison Phipps sent me a question and said, you know, how do you make a path look like it's not just going straight up on your canvas or whatever? So in this instance, when we save that little bit back there, you're never gonna see the whole path, right? So you might see the edge and then it might start to grow towards us and then it'll start coming around the bend, right? I'm just gonna take a little bit of the white, a little bit of the brown, Let's make up a new little pile over here, white and brown, just like that. And we'll come over here. It's gotta get bigger as it comes towards us, remember that. Can't let it get small. You know, once you pick your small area back here, you've gotta let this guy work and get bigger and bigger and bigger, All right? It almost looks like now, if we can get this, just to go behind that little bit of grass and then come back just like that, where we cut, it's, it's just going back behind the grass. Now, it's almost like we've gone uphill and now it's going back down flat again. So it just depends what yours looks like, what the color is, and how wide it is, right? Poof, we got our own little path, just like that. It looks like it's getting further away because it makes a turn and goes behind a hill that we can't see around. And that's the key. It's not about painting the whole thing, it's about not painting the whole thing. And I say that all the time. You guys are like, what does he mean? Well, we're trying not to paint all of the path, right? Because unless we were looking at it from above in a helicopter, we wouldn't be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, we wouldn't be able to see the whole path to begin with. So things you got to think about, right? It's called perspective. Let's see, bring down a little bit more of that color at those same angles just to meet up with that, that bit of brown. Now we got a cool little bit of grass growing by the side of our path. And all we really did was take a bit of the brown, mix it with some white, and then mush in a bit of brown onto the canvas and then pull it out with our one inch brush. Very simply done. Very simply done. Right? Boom. I might've gone ham over on this side, so we'll just blend that in a little bit more. 
There we go. Path has to be wider at the front, right? Wider up here than it is back there, which is we've accomplished. Looks very good. You guys did an excellent job. I can see yours. It looks amazing. There we go. We got this cool little thing happening where it looks like it's almost going uphill and then it'll rotate down. You could do steps if you wanted to. So we could take a bit of dark and let's say there's a step right there, right there, right? As we come down, we can see the next step as it's building towards, right? So let's make these guys sort of rectangular. They don't need to be super dark. They just need to be darker than normal, right? Bam, darker than the brown that's back there. And they don't have to be real thick either. The paint doesn't have to be real thick on there. And as we know, as things get closer to us, the steps would get larger and larger and larger. <clears throat> and so in our case, we were meaning wider and wider and wider, little bits of steps as we climb up. So in any, any instance, when you're looking and you think that your path might not look just right, because it may look like it's going too far uphill, add some steps. You don't have to change the whole painting, just add some steps. You'll be good. You're like, oh no, we have to redo this whole thing. Well, why? Well, this, well, just add the steps. Bam, we're done, right? You don't have to do anything else to the, the poor little guy. And the steps don't even have to be perfectly straight. We're out here in the middle of nowhere. So we're not on, we're not on the Queen of England's doorstep. We, didn't, we don't need to have perfectly straight steps, right? They can be covered in dirt, or whatever. Just like that. Little bits going up. Now, maybe if we can just get enough white and brown to mix together, just to make like a really white sandy beach look like very light brown, and we could get that to rest on top of the stairs, now we're in business. A little bit of that color in between. Just letting it roll off just like we would on a, you know, a water line. Man. And now we've got a little bit of definition and a little bit of 3D-ness because we have that light over the top of the, of the uh, dark. All right, a little bit more color back in there. Let them mix together. All right. Looks pretty neat to me, guys. I don't know about you. But instead of having to fix a whole painting, it's a pretty easy thing just to add a couple steps. That's just my opinion anyway. And they can look all nasty and crazy just like that. Like again, we're not, we're not on the, the Queen of England's front door. We're on some outdoor steps, you know, far off out in the middle of nowhere. These ones down here have to be the darkest though. So let's get our dark color back out. And really make it dark underneath there. It's almost going to look like we can just step into it right from the canvas. Right from out here in the studio, we're just going to step right into this one and go. Looks really cool. Now you're like, well, how are we going to, you know, seal the stairs in? Like, do they look like they need to have something on the edge? We definitely need something over on this side. Maybe a bigger boulder on the side. Or like a lion. If I could paint like a lion, I would do like a, a, a granite lion statue. Like we're leading up somewhere or going somewhere. There we go. Just taking the very edge of these and just working it away. And that way we get these, they're almost like stone steps. Where's Aslan when you need him? There we go. I'm trying to tap at the edge just to make them soft. And again, that's like, the, I, I just tried that for the first time here. I've never done that before, but it ends up looking sort of neat. If you can get it to look just right. And that's what we're about, just getting stuff to look just right enough to where we can pass it off like we actually meant to do that, right? Put a little bit of that light color up there too. I almost have too much dark in between. All things we gotta fix. Bam. There we go. That one little piece of like dark line back here will give this one a, a look like it's really far away, but it's lifted also on top of something else. Or it's a lifted bit of stare See? there we go and there's always that chance that you can do too much right so don't do too much i always say that try not to do too much then we can shape them right you can make them a little bit 
smaller back there and shape the stairs as we're going. Or down here, make it a little bit smaller. Just bring them in, tighten them up a little bit, depending on what yours looks like, right? Now, I think I will need whatever we have. We're going to have like some grass underneath. So we'll have to put in a little bit of that dark color as our grass, right? And again, that's, you never know. You have to watch a Paint With Josh video all the way through to make sure that if I say we're going to put water in down at the bottom or do trees like we said we were going to, that we actually do what we said because I change my mind a lot. So once it's on video and it's nice and edited and everything's all gravy, then we're all good. But I do like to change my mind quite a lot when I'm painting because I'm literally making it up as we go and going, okay, it would look cool if that was like that or if this ridge had a little bit more of a shadow, you know, to where we're not really covering up all the green, but we do have all this, these different elevations in our scene now. All these different things. All right, just bringing them down different ways, letting stuff grow. And then we can sort of go back and highlight it, make it look all nice and beautiful like this side. And we'll go back and highlight those trees too. This whole time we've been forgetting about the trees, neglecting them. Can't neglect the trees. Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of our liquid white, start grabbing the green and just working it into that liquid white. And you can see it'll get very slippery on your brush. And that's the kind of uh, consistency that you want because you want it to come off of your brush nice and simply and easily. Let's grab up a little bit more of that brown, mix it over here. We forgot, almost forgot to do our tree trunks, which is moving so fast, right? <laughs> All right, you're like that, grab up a little bit of our tree trunk color and then every so often, just gonna put in a little, little indication of some wood back there, holding up that whole big tree. All right, we can even do it on this guy. If we can get anything to stick, you don't have to go up too high. As long as there's a little bit of color there, then we're going to be in gravy city, man. A lot of times, especially against the sunset, the very tip tops of everything are going to be nice and silhouetted anyway in real life. So you wouldn't really see it. At least that's what I tell my people. There we go. Very lightly again, even lighter than before coming in with this little brush because we don't want to cover up all the dark area. Right? And we don't want to go all the way down to the bottom either. It doesn't have to be so bright down around the bottom. Add a little, couple little bits of branches over there. And you see it's only really highlighting a few real areas. And that's because the liquid white that's on the brush is depositing and picking up that paint at the same time. So your brush will start to go uh, dark, right? We've got to change that. We've got to get rid of that. Go back, wipe off the brush, get new paint, new color and then come back in and go nuts with the next one. Just like that, just kind of bouncing them in. Not everywhere has to be the same amount of brightness. Don't wanna let all of your tree trunks show through, right? And then areas where it just doesn't make sense that it's that bright, you go back over a couple times and then poof. Poof, just like that. You get this cool little bit of a tree and that's even too bright right there. Areas that's kind of come out and say hello and a lot of times if you get too much you can get lucky and go back in there and just pop in a couple little dark areas and just allow them to mix in with that color just slightly and then you won't have such a very bright area like that okay let's wash off this half round brush that we made our bushes with and we'll come in dry that sucker off hit our little bit of our liquid white and why not we'll make it nice and bright like orangish, yellowish. It's gonna be like a like a sunset in the bushes, right? Pow! Wow! Look at that! Just super bright bit of bush back here. And the sun's just lighting it up. Whatever it is, it's very bright and very gorgeous. Now I get the smallest little bit. Maybe we'll switch to our crimson real fast. Tap that in just so we can get a little change in the color. It's a little bit more pinkish red down around the bottom. Couple little things, maybe a couple ones hanging out in there. It's just a whole infestation of these little pink, pink and red little flowers or whatever's growing at the base of these trees, right? It's really pretty. All because we've just made it up and we're just trying to look and see what would look neat. And I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Once you figure out what brush does exactly what thing, kind of branch out and start making up your own scenes and see where you can go. 
Where are you gonna travel in your own scene? Let's go over here. We're gonna add in a couple little bits of grass and just sort of work them away from our path over here, right? Work them away. That's why we get a little bit of brightness down in here. It'll kind of draw everyone's eye into what's happening right in here. And then poof, we're gonna come down with some bigger trees. All right, let's go back get a little bit more of the black, crimson and blue right onto the brush. Just let them mix up into this nice dark color. And we got a lot of distance to cover, right? It's a 16 inch canvas right here. So we need to do at least a 14 inch tree unless we go all the way off the top, which would be kind of neat. Let's do one off here. Maybe it can be a little buddy for, for his guy back here. All right, remember the more we go down, the harder we push. So it extends out a little bit. This guy's actually gonna be a little bit closer than that guy because we came down so far. A little bit softer down around the bottom so we can't see where the bottom is. Actually on this guy, why don't we take him back? We can push him back. See, push him back there to meet up with his friend. It is just that easy. All right, let's grab a little bit of our liquid paint thinner or lower mineral spirits or brush cleaner or baby oil or olive oil. I used olive oil one time, no shame, no shame in it. I didn't know what I was doing. And I was like, I need something wet and slick that'll stay slick for a minute. And olive oil was my thing. There we go, you gotta have enough kind of thinner in your brush to let it grow and be nice and thin at the end. You know what I mean? So go back, get more paint thinner or baby oil or however you're making yours nice and runny like ink from a pen. There we go. Just different little things everywhere. Little branches, all sorts of stuff coming off of this guy. See how it's very thick out here though? We can't have that. We gotta have it be thicker. And if that's thicker, then the whole thing has gotta get a little bit thicker all the way down. Just like that. And now that one gives me an idea to do like another branch off the side. Based off like that. That looks good. And again, they don't have to look the same. Right? We don't want them to look the same. That's not going to be realistic if they all look the same. So give them different looks, different branches, different stuff. Again, see if we can't take some of that bit of uh, kind of lighter color deposit it right onto the edge. That way we've got a sunny side and a darker side. And let's keep going, right? Let's make some bigger ones. Come over here. Maybe we got a little far off bit. Who knows, maybe there's a, there's a good sized pine tree in, the, in between the middle of them, right? Everybody loves a good old evergreen tree. So come from the side, just kind of pushing up. And now we're rotating like a metronome kind of covering over everything that's back there, right? Not leaving bits. We need to have that block out all the stuff, all the detail from the tree behind it, all the grass, all the layers. It's got to block out everything. We don't want it to, to, to allow too much to show through, except for at the top. At the top, you can allow a little bit of that light to come through, right? But not too much. And you want to have it very thick. The more the thicker it is, the more it's going to want to grab that highlight paint from us, right? That looks really cool. All right, let's do that. Grab our brush. Maybe pull this guy up the side, kind of straight down over to here. And just working that little bit of darker color into the scene, right? We need to, that looks really cool. It's like wrapped up around the edge right there. Oh man, that looks neat. So I'm trying to do is just blend it into the green kind of color that we have back there, right? working all these colors together so they blend and mix and do all that. <clears throat> now let's come back and grab up our micro brush again, go right through that green, maybe down through this yellow too, just so we can have a couple little differences in color on there. And I always almost forget the stinking tree trunks. The tree trunk really helps, you know, the eye pick out what's holding it up. It makes sense to your brain, even though you don't think it might. You're like, oh, no one's going to notice if there's a tree trunk in there. Nah, people will notice, I'm telling you. 
Now, the cool part about the tree trunk is that you can cover over most of it. So if you don't like the way yours looks, once you get over that area, you can go and cover right over it. Right? The more and more we go, the more it wants to pick up all the, all the dark color. So it makes you want to push harder. But be gentle, right? Don't need the whole thing lit, right? Not every piece has to be the same amount of green. Just like that. I like having these little differences. And I've got all these little orange and yellow bits up in the top to make it look really neat too. Don't know why I decided to do that on this one. Just tried it and it turned out looking good. So maybe that's an idea to keep towards a new one going uh, forward. Now, let's see if we can't get some of that kind of white with our crimson over here again. A little bit of that liquid white. Let's see if we can't get some of these little pinkish kind of red flowers growing around the base of this guy, just like we have over here. Just a couple, not too many. Just a couple little pretty little things. Gonna pull them out. Yeah, just like that. Just a little bit of different color. Something's happening down around the base of that guy that we can't really tell. We have all this light color. It's all kind of going, like our steps are going up and man, it's looking good. It's looking good. And that's my point. You're not going to see the whole path leading all the way, you know, out. You're going to see a couple steps or a little bit, a few feet, 10 or 20 feet of the path, and then it's going to change direction or go up and down or go down and you'll lose sight of it. You won't see the whole thing. So let's see. We can do one more, one more over here. Yeah, let's do the big monster guy over here. Okay, we're going to need a lot of paint, guys. A lot of paint. Grab up some of that brown. We need a lot of brown, too. And we're going to come down and from top to bottom, just... I like to put little bends in them. And then it's sort of a different... There we go. And that's what I mean about having all that color back there. We don't really need it. It's not... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That thing just went right off the edge of the canvas. There we go. Kind of pulling it down, we got this giant bit of tree that lives in the foreground, okay? Now, in order to put branches on that, we need a lot of paint thinner. So get like five, six dips into your, your cup, go back into your pile over here, and just start chucking out giant pieces of wood that would, will eventually get smaller as we go with our smaller brush, right? Maybe it comes out this way, wants to cut right in front of that tree, but I don't want to do it just yet. All right, come over there. Again, some of these ones on the bottom are gonna be giant branches. Gigantic branches, look at this. Right, we cut across our whole scene and come down in front of that thing. And it just, I mean, it feels like a lot, but when you look at the painting, you're like, no, that's, that's right. Like, that's how close these trees, you know, these tree limbs would be. They would be humongous. Cut right back in front of that uh, bit of um, uh, chemtrail. Almost forgot what the heck it was called. What am I painting over here? There we go. All these little things growing off this big old monster tree down here. And then I love, you guys know me, I love when you're walking through the forest and you get like jabbed from the center of the tree. There's like a, a piece of a branch that comes out that you don't expect and it just pokes you. So start into the tree, pull out, make it pointy at the end. Don't go too far. Right, gonna fill up all that. Then you could cover over this with all this foliage and stuff, but I like these bare branches, especially when we're painting a painting that's so beautiful already, and we've done such an amazing job on the sky. Why would we wanna go and change that and cover it all with this, you know, giant bit of whatever color, you know, splotches and all that stuff. So. <clears throat> let's see, let's see, let's see. We're gonna switch to a slightly smaller brush and we may go down one more size again, but slightly smaller, gonna give us sharper tips, more detail that we can do cool little things with these branches on, right? Different little things and with the, all that thinner on there, it allows the brush to just flow nice and easily across all this thicker paint that we have up on the canvas, right? Different little things, little flips, little things here, over there. A couple little pieces want to come down in front of the tree behind it, right? Just helps push that little bit of pine tree back. But you don't want to go too crazy. 
because that stuff gets hard to control. Once you start pushing it into all that thick paint, it gets very hard to control. So don't go too far with it. See, I'm gonna push it in there and then I'm gonna have to highlight the sucker within all of that deep paint, which is gonna be more difficult to do. So try not to do too much. Here we go. A couple little things, bam. Just little bits that grow off these trees. And this, you could literally sit and paint for hours. Different little bends and hooks and things they crisscross and they move back and forth and they go over and they break, right? They're not all the same because they're all, half of the time a moose walks by and cracks one off. And then all of a sudden you don't have a branch there anymore. It's just a stub. Point being, they don't have to be perfect. And not every branch has to look like the branch directly next to itself. But you do need a fair amount of thinner, right? Gotta get the thinner on the brush. And that thinner allows it to kind of move. Otherwise it's very difficult. You gotta put these cool little bits of twistiness and twirliness and little things going on different things happen in those branches. They're not just all straight, right? You come out and you go, uh-uh, had a little mishap over here. I wanted to grow up in this direction. Just different little things. They don't all have to look the same. But you don't want to have too many either. So stop, Josh, what are we doing? Throw a couple over here, a little bit off of that side, over there, let's take those guys up because they're not really the focal point. Finish it on the edge, finish it right there. Maybe go up on the top just real quick. Couple more little details there and there, here and there. Just little things sticking up out of our tree, growing from the center, going out. Different little things, right? Cool little things. And again, we don't even have to highlight this. You could literally do that. Grab our bigger bit of brush. All right, and then take it, just make little wigglies all the way down. And it'll end up looking like a cool bit of bark in the tree. It takes a minute to do, you know what I mean? But it'll end up looking neat. You get all these cool little details without having to use the knife, right? Just kind of letting it grow down in these different little bits, letting some of the, you know, some of that darker color show through the bottom, covering some of it, using some of it. And just like that. Starting to come together, guys. What I say is very simply done. I always say that because you can do something just like this with no training, just a, a, the will to want to have fun and make a mess, right? You can do cool things just like we do here. So you can always join my YouTube membership program. I have a membership program where you pay $7.99 to access my deep instructional classes. Now they are quite a value because the value will always grow. I'll always add new classes, but they, the uh, cost is never gonna go up on you. Add a little bit of dark underneath that branch. Just a little bit of dark, adds a little bit of shadow in there. Some kind of something, some deep bit that the, the sun just can't get wrapped around. All right, watch, we can pop out of the tree a little bit. A little wiggly. And then when you look at this, you're gonna have all these real thick, cool bits of textury, you know, lines, all these things. You, when you run your hand over it, it's literally gonna feel like bark on a tree. You'll have all these little ridges and cool little things happening. Just literally by scraping it up, right? And trying to spin the knife and drop it off as we go. Literally it, poof, just like that. Nice little simple way to do it. Now let's get a, bit, a little bit of liquid white, go into our brownish, and then on some of these guys, we have to add just a little bit of lighter color so they stay disconnected from, there we go, that tree back there, a little bit of light in there, all kind of leading to this one point on our branch. And then we'll throw in that dark again so it stays nice and dark underneath. There we go. Gives it that kind of, 3D rounded feel to me. That looks really cool though, guys, my goodness. 
My goodness. And we're just going to take this guy, kind of decide where we want the bottom of him to live. Pull it out almost straight sideways, you know what I mean? And then we'll come back in, grab up our little bit since we've already added our dark color. Come in here with our brightest color of our grass right up here closest to us underneath this guy. Right, we can even take a lift up on this grass a little bit. We add some back here, just a little text, couple little textured areas. So it's not all the same, right? We get these cool little bits, cool little things happening, all sorts of differences. A little bit of dark in there too, why not? You gotta have it mix. Gotta have it mixed, Josh. Want them to stay separate. There we go. All about trying stuff, guys. Try it out. See what happens. There we go. A little bit more dark under there. And finally, a little bit more of our green. Just a different shade. So we get these different little colors, our little differences, our graduation. Kind of growing up into the tree roots and all sorts of stuff. And we put the smallest little bit of color down in there for our grass. Just like that, guys. Got a pretty wicked cool little thing. And we still can do something over here in the front. I don't think we're done yet. We still have color on the palette. So we can't be done just yet. Why don't we do... This brown is like from three, four, five days ago. It's kind of hard now. Let's do a little guy, but not so little, right? Right through our favorite little bit of bush back there, but it pushes it back. We got the other one here that shows you what it is. All right, get a whole bunch of color on there. So we get this nice little kind of knife-like edge. There we go. And then we get thicker as we come down, right? We don't want to come down all the way. So we're going to have to take it, kind of pull it back, decide where he's going to live. Pull down and away and to the side and away, just like this, right? And that way we can put him up on a little pedestal. Come back in. Kind of change the bit of our grass over here. And now we got another cool little piece. Really neat. All right, let's finish off the edge and then we'll put our birdies in. At the Grand Master with the three birdies that shocked the house for the old ladies. Yeah, I'm writing a song. I'm writing a song. Those are one of the lyrics. Let's see, it's come down from the top. Pull off to the side, make that really pointy up there. Come over here, ba 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 bam. A little bit more. And out to the edge. Down a little into there. Maybe we got one behind it going out the other way. That goes over there. All right, a little tree on the other, a little branch on the opposite side. Bring that down over here. Come in over and up. I don't want to fight too much with these guys, so we're just going to make little small branches. A little bit that came out of that tree. Got to have our, our little guy. <laughs> That's gigantic, Josh. Oh, my. That's a big old bit of branch right there. Don't want to mess with him. There we go. Just the smallest little bit, little tweaks, little here, little there, a little shakiness, little change in direction. You get cool little things to happen. Cool little things going on. There we go. For some reason, we came out a little bit too far right there. So again, just extend the, the point of our tree. That's really it. Man, this one looks really good, guys. Really fantastic. It's so lovely. Need to make our tree a bit bigger just to cover over that guy. You don't need the branch to be so dang big. There we go. A little bit of darkness. Come back in. Just kind of mix it in, blend it in with that stuff. Now he's not so bad. Come back in for our branch. Pick a spot. Connect them up. Now it's just shooting out of the tree like that. Very cool. Make a bit of our brown. And why not? We had that whole side, so we'll do this whole side. Just kind of mixing it, mushing it on, letting it grow with the tree. And it's just kind of, it'll naturally kind of blend itself out. There we go. Now, one little thing that really makes these guys stand out is a bit of brighter 
highlight it right on the top. Just a little bit of color out there. This have some, makes them stand right out. Put it back into the tree. Just like that. Cool little things, guys. Wicked little things going on in this painting. All these little details and different ways to highlight trees and all sorts of texture in this giant guy over here. It's really going to be fun to, to kind of move your hand across this guy when it gets finished. No doubt about it. All right, real quickly, I'm going to continue on with some of these guys just to have them make sense in my own brain. There we go. Some of them are just too nice. They don't have enough little bits to them, little, little sharp areas and different different pieces of wood and different things. It's just too nice. So we got to add our own little pieces and our own little stuff. There we go. That's how we're just going to build the tree out. That's all I do. Kind of look at it, see what it's going to look like. Crisscross some of the branches over there and they're growing around at the top and no one knows what's happening. It's all fantastic. It is all fantastic. This one's going to cut across into this guy. It's going to stay nice and dark, though, so he stands, stands out. Yeah, just like that. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I don't think we need to add anything else to this. It's a neat little painting. So let's go add the signature. Flying right through the brightest area. Way far off, though. That's me, my wife, and my daughter. All right, we go into every single painting as part of the signature, so... I encourage you guys to add your wives and daughters and husbands and grandparents and extended family. You could have a whole sky filled with birds. But uh, in my case, me, my wife, my daughter, and they go into every single painting as part of the signature. And it's really the only way we get to travel around. And I'm so happy that everyone has really taken, you know, so kindly to it, to where people are putting in their own family of flock. You know what I mean? And they go, oh, I recognize your painting because I saw the, the family of birds instantly and I knew it was a paint with Josh, you know what I mean? So I never thought initially that that, you know, it would ever make it to that point where somebody would even say, you know, that. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of cool that I can inspire people. And I do encourage you to, to put your own family in there. So however many you got, you can do seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 30,000 birds all throughout there. And we just, it's like, what is, what is beyond this little area that we're in. What is on the other side? That's what I want to know. It's fantastic. My goodness, it's fantastic. Let's see. Almost need this guy to be a little bit thicker though. Damn, just didn't make sense. All that extra weight out there on the end of that branch, he might not have been able to stand upright. What was I even doing? I, I guess, uh, see, you guys caught me off guard. Hang on, here we go, here we go. Here we go, this is the, this is the kicker right here. All right, put it over here. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed painting this painting. I have a mountain of brushes I have to go clean up. So uh, in the meantime, go to my Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash happy uh, slash paint with Josh. Sorry. You can get all the stuff that I use, this easel, this canvas, the brushes, everything that we use. Go to amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. Uh, make sure you follow me on Facebook, on Twitch, on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere. If it's not Paint With Josh, it's at Paint With Josh K, and you'll be able to find me there. So until then, until we see you next time, we have a live video on Sunday. We've got live videos on Friday. We've got a live video Thursday. We've got live videos Monday. we got regular videos coming out, you know, on Wednesday. We're literally doing too much, right? Should I slow down? I don't know. Am I going to lose my mind? Maybe. But until then, you guys take care. We'll see you later, and have the rest of a good day. Bye-bye. Does it never work for me? Find all the codes you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm glad you guys were able to, to paint it. Everything is available on my Facebook store, my Etsy store, every other store. What a, what a way to blooper it, Josh. Already with the bloopers for everybody watching live. All right. Now we have to do this sweaty intro. Hang on. I'm here. I'm there. I'm paint with Josh. I'm everywhere. Oh, guys, the new song is going to be fantastic. What?
Oh, everyone loves the, uh, the, the pow, the exit, right? All right. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Paint. <laughs> See, this is where all the bloopers come in. If you've never seen a Paint with Josh video. Did we, we clean it? I think we did. How do I look? How do I look? I'm like, crap. Okay, here we go. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today, we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas on, uh, this one is going to have a lot of bloopers in it. So, all right. All right. One more time. One more time. One take only. Here we go. Here we go. Your leisure and paint along with Josh. So, I'm glad we didn't call the channel Paint Along with Josh. That just sounds lame. It's because everyone's sitting there laughing. If you guys aren't tapping that laugh emoji a thousand times, then I don't know what you're watching. All right. I don't even know what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we here? Are we there? So, all right, guys, it's been Paint with Josh. It's been Thursday night. I am just, I don't even know these paint fumes. I can't. It's just a, later. Have the rest of a good day. And pow! It's my goodness, the sound changes every time. Oh, boom! Oh, I'm tired. I'm so tired, guys.